Yo, what's up? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Friday, November 11th, 2022. I'm one of your hosts, Blessing Adioye Jr. Joining me is Video Game Chronicles, Jordan Midler. I'm here to set the record straight. Oh, no. You read enough of our stories that at this point, I feel like we just need to, we need to have we're, we're starting with, we're, st- we're starting fresh with it. Yeah. Of course, what was it, last week, two weeks ago, there was a report about Sega's reported numbers Sega, uh, Sega claimed Sega's to, claimed yes. numbers on Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, that was written by the one and only Jordan Midler at VGC. Um, so here's the thing: in news, there are no facts; there are only claims. Um, mm. So when you say that Sega claims to have done these things, um, you're thinking: how accurate can their measuring be? How can they definitely know that they have acquired the they have done these sales? How do you know they're not pumping up? That's just the okay. the, the news brain. I worry. You gave them the benefit of the doubt because it's Sonic. How do you respond to those allegations? Uh, oh, you think I gave them the benefit of the doubt? Just because it's Sonic. You said let Sonic have its win. It, oh, okay. It obviously didn't get its win with Frontiers, so it needed it somewhere. Okay, okay first of all, let's calm down here, because VGC gave Sonic Frontiers a 4 out of 5. VGC, that Chris <laughs> Scullion gave it a 4 <laughs> out of 5. And VGC is a website that you, you work for. You yeah. write for. That's a 2 out of 5 you game, stand if by. you ask Jordan Midler. Okay, fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Jordan, welcome to the show. Thanks for uh, having me, man. Welcome to the States. Yes, um, I'm, I'm here stateside for, I was at a Microsoft event, and I thought, you know what, the States is massive, but I'm within <laughs> a two-hour flight of coming to see you guys, so I wasn't going to pass it up. Of course. Especially after you talked shit about um, my article. So. About the claim. Hey, listen, yeah. I had to get you back for, uh, well, you talked shit about, was it Breath of the Wild the first time you were here? When oh, you came oh, here yeah. in February? We oh, my God, that was. That, that was Jordan. That was you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See, I was friendly you, uh, to you in the back room, and I, I shouldn't have been. Oh, man. Look, Breath of the Wild is famously a 7 out of 10 game, <laughs> and more people need to say it. Famously. Wow. I famously. Don't know if it's famously. What did, what did VG, on, video game, was video games trying to go around? Plus, we need exist. to start banning <laughs> people that we bring into the studio. Come on, man. I know. Uh, you think this was my decision. It's Greg Miller. He's standing in the back room right now. I can see him smiling, too. He was like, I knew, he knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. Doing. Yeah, uh, you said so again. What brought you to the states? So I was at a Microsoft Flight Sim event, and now um, how was it? It was great. It was it was so nice to do in person events again, especially a Microsoft thing where it's like they have the budget to do it properly. Um, so yeah, it was super nice. The Flight Sim 40th anniversary update is cool. Helicopters, gliders, all this stuff that if you're super nerdy about it, you love it. But me, who mm-hmm. just plays Flight Sim kind of therapeutically, um, I, I, I super enjoyed it as well. Um, so yeah, it was excellent. Jordan, I do want to congratulate you. I mm-hmm. think because kindoffunny.com says you're wrong, and Greg can probably correct me in the background. I believe you're our first official guest host that has come through to the studio. Is that true? That has sit, sat down on laughs. PhD on, in the studio. Does that seem right, Greg? I don't, I don't recall doing a, this show with anybody else besides Greg and Tim in the studio. So I'm going to go ahead and say you're our first guest Chat in the studio. Chat will correct us. Before. Chat will definitely correct you. Number one guest host of all time. That's what I'm hearing. I'm waiting for Chat to, to correct us. Somebody in chat says, who is this fine Scottish gentleman? Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm the only Scottish games journalist. Uh, somebody in chat says, this chat fights about Breath of the Wild more than any other game. That is true. That's the thing. When I said my truth about Breath of the Wild, so many of the best friends were in my mentions on Twitter saying, finally... Someone's talking about this. Mm, the great mm, truth. Mm. Uh, somebody is asking, does Obli count? Obli wasn't like the, on the whole episode, right? Obli came through for one news story and helped helped us out with that one. So, I, I, <laughs> exa- exactly, exactly. And so, yeah, I, I think I, I want to say you're our first official guest on Kind of Funny Games Day. Well, so congratulations. I'm honored. Thank you very much. Well, Jordan, enough about that. Let's talk about today's stories, which include James Gunn's DC Universe, including video games. You're never going to get used to that. Uh, the smoke. Control sequel officially getting announced again. And more because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every week at 10 a.m. live right here on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games and Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. If you're watching live, you can correct us when we get stuff wrong by going to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong. If you don't want to watch live, you can watch later on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games or you can listen later on podcast services around the globe by searching for kind of funny games daily remember you can use epic creator code kind of funny on all epic store and epic in-game purchases like rocket league and fortnite to help support the channel to be a part of the show head <coughs> excuse me head to kind of funny uh, dot com slash kfgd to write in with your questions squad ups and more and remember patreon.com slash kind of funny will get you the show ad free plus a bevy of bonus content housekeeping for you there's no kind of funny games daily on Monday. Boo! Instead, 
We're going live with a kind of funny games cast at 9 a.m. Pacific time to react Yay. to and predict each of the Game Awards nominations and winners. Yay. <laughs> uh, you can catch that right here on YouTube and Twitch and later on podcast services around the globe. And then G4's X-Play may be gone, but it will never be forgotten. You can join the X-Play team and the Kind of Funny crew in a special reunion celebrating X-Play. There will be behind-the-scenes stories, never-before-seen footage, a chat, Q&A, and more, all benefiting Rise Above the Disorder, which provides no-cost mental health support. Join us on November 15th at 11 a.m. Pacific time on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames. And that, in particular, I am very uh, excited about. Of course, I'm a big fan of G4, grew up a big fan of G4, loved the, the, the comeback of G4, and was very saddened to see G4 getting shut down. And so we're going to give them one last hurrah this Tuesday, November 15th, 11 a.m., right here. Uh, and then a new PS I Love You XOXO is up right now, and it's all about whether or not God of War Ragnarok is worth the platinum trophy. That is up on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games and on podcast services around the globe. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Morgan Lorraine, Fargo Brady, Christopher Rodriguez, the Kind of Funny Destiny 2 PC clan, Tall Tree 81 Joseph A. Carlson, 1UP Pest Control, Kerry Palmer, Elliot, Brian Cheney, Trevor Starkey, Super Daddy Kyle, Undertopian, David Mindtel, Mind Freak, Mind Eric Freak. Velasquez, Scotty Wyatt, Alex Greedle, Al Tridesman, Jason L, James Davis at James Davis Makes, Mick at the Nanobiologist Abramson, Ryan T from Tennessee, Derek Gareg, and Donald Eccles. Today we're brought to you by Factor, MeUndies, and Shady Rays, but we'll tell you about that later for now. Let's begin with what is, and forever will be, the Roper Report. <laughs> it's time for some news. We got seven stories today. A baker's dozen. Starting with our number one. DC games at WB might be a part of a larger connected universe. This is Victoria Kennedy at Eurogamer. It was recently revealed that filmmaker James Gunn was to become co-chairman and co-CEO of DC Studios alongside Peter Safran. Their new roles would, would see the, the overall creative direction of films, TV, and animation for the DC Universe united under a single banner. But it now looks like this is also going to include any future games with Warner Brothers Discovery head David Zaslav uh, recently expressing his excitement for the new structure Gunn and Safran would bring to the studio along with their appointment. As reported by Deadline, Zaslav allegedly held a town hall with Warner Brothers Discovery employees earlier this week to introduce the two new chairmen to the company. Here, Zaslav reported, or sorry, reportedly said uh, there is a plan afoot to, quote, build a Bible for a cohesive DC universe, end quote. That would include such media as, quote, live action films, TV, animation, gaming, and more, end quote. It is unclear if this means any future games in the DC world would be considered canon or not. For comparison, Disney has done something similar with Star Wars, where games like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and Star Wars Battlefront 2 are considered canon. No new DC projects were discussed during this town hall. Jordan? Yeah. I guess the question I want to start off with, uh, with you is, what is your history with DC? Are you a DC pers person? Do you like Superman like Greg Miller does? I love Batman. I think the Batman kind of universe and all the, the villains are amazing. I did have a brief dalliance with Superman when I was very impressionable at a young age. And the reason I had that dalliance is kind of just lurking in the wings over there. But he's not for me personally. Mm -hmm. Don't love the films. But it's sad to me because I still think the best comic book game comes from DC, like the Arkham series. So it seems like they had a bit of momentum. They were licensing the stuff out to great studios. And now, obviously, all this stuff has just been a complete bin fire, including, uh, was it Batgirl or Batwoman that they... Batgirl, that okay, they cancelled. That was largely filmed in Glasgow, where I'm from. So mm. the, the second Scotland is on the screen, they just completely throw it in the bin. So, yeah. How do you feel about the idea of DC games possibly being incorporated in this larger DC universe? Of course, to catch people up, right? James Gunn hired as co-CEO uh, and co-chairman, along with uh, Peter Safran, right? The idea there is that the DCEU has been a fucking trash fire. <laughs> All the movies, except for a few of them, like the Suicide Squad, the, the Suicide Squad squad yeah. and birds of prey have all been batman v superman. Uh, batman v superman. batman v superman they've all been a trash fire they've all been terrible let's burn it down and build it back from the ground up with uh james gunn taking the helm right that seemingly including video games could be an interesting thing isn't that right greg miller of kind of funny Woo! that could be thank you very much bear thank you for having the one woo it could be a very interesting thing and i'm stoked for it uh you know james gunn friend of the show jordan oh, no yeah. big deal uh a uh, great head on his shoulders, right? And I think that 
you know, you compare it to Star Wars and stuff. My interest in it, uh, the fact that they want to unify and have this vision is exciting because I want DC to take care of all their properties and care about them and, and not have something be less than. Yeah. Looking at you, CW shows. <laughs> uh, where, of course, they, oh, the DCEU, the DCEU, the DCEU, and mm. then the CW shows, which, you know, did some things right and did a lot wrong and all this. Oh, yeah. They kind of just language on the vine, right? Like the Flash CG. We're just going to talk about the Flash CG for a second, how terrible all that was. Um, the idea of a holistic vision and it all really counts is exciting and it is cool. Uh, we were talking earlier before we went live, right, uh, Jordan, and the fact that like, even though obviously in pop culture, Marvel is the multiverse now and they've got it down, right? Like in comics long before that, I would really say that DC was the multiverse people. Crisis yeah. on infinite earths. You, you can go back the way they've screwed with their universes and had different earths and yada, yada, yada. I feel like that's what this would be. Which I think could be super cool. Where, yeah, it wouldn't be like, let's say they stick with Gal for Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. I don't think that would then have to, the movies would then have to make sense for the game that Monolith is working on. But I think it would be awesome to do, uh, and I, it's very easy to get too far into it, too fast, very much like Go DCEU, ahead. but have a Superboy Prime punches the multiverse wall, right? And it does like the shatter, and you see in all the shards, you yeah, see yeah. the Monolith Wonder Woman game, and you also see Gal, and you also see this. Like, they could do something fun with that, and that would still be. Hey, it's all in the DCU. Yeah, and that would be your last appearance on any piece of content because it would kill you stone dead. You... I mean, I'd have to stay alive to see what they keep doing. With yeah, it. you know mm. what I mean. I'm a glutton for punishment. How are they going <laughs> to fuck this up? They've done so rough and everything else. And I, I think the, the way that you're talking <laughs> about it, a lot there, of crotch on me there. Sorry, about <laughs> like that. a whole lot of crotch. The way you're talking about it there, I think, makes a bit more sense even than even how the the article compares it to what Disney has done with Star Wars because Star Wars is more of a universe, right? Whereas yeah. DC, I think, is the characters and the superheroes that make up that universe. When we're talking about Jedi Fallen Order, right? You're talking about Cal Kestis, who is this character that is made for the game. When you're talking about Star Wars Battlefront 2 and the story there, right? Those are characters that are made for the game that are playing around with this, with this universe, but don't necessarily have to conflict with other things that are going on with, with the, with the universe. You'd paint yourself into a corner real quick, right? If it was like, cool, no, it's all one universe, no multiverse stuff. And it's like, well, great, but then... Yeah, so what the are the next, games that we're making then? If you the have next, a Superman movie... Exactly, we movies. made a Batman movie but we it's exclusive to whoever's doing it so they can't be a batman game yeah. so it'd be that, that would suck really quick right it would just be games that are the blue beetle or mm. stuff and i'm not even throwing shots but it'd be stuff like gotham knights where it's like you're not batman do you want to be do you want to be red hood and most people are like no yeah. <laughs> no I, gotham, don't. I think gotham knights is quite underrated i got a lot of flack for this this motherfucker coming on saying breath <laughs> this, of the wild's a seven the, out of the ten worst, the and then he's ever. like gotham knights not that bad <laughs> who, not, it, who's it, letting these people in barrett <laughs> it is like the ultimate you don't have to think about anything kind of Accurate. game. Like, it is... Let me uh, talk about Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want to play as Sonic. Like, That's fair. Red Hood, Red Hood is also lame in a way that Sonic is lame. But Red Hood has guns. So you see there's... Okay. Red Hood, I think, is more, more of a the shadow. shadow. Yeah. More of yeah. a shadow, the hedgehog figure there. But yeah. I feel I hear, I hear where you're coming from. Is Shadow, and I don't know if that's a spoiler, so I truly don't care, but is Shadow <laughs> in Frontiers? I can't say. I won't say. I can't say. Look at this I man, say. protecting it. Because <laughs> Sonic fans care, like honestly, like legitimately, I can't say yes or no, right? Because yeah. like I think people do care, but uh, yeah, no, I think what makes this interesting is I think this kind of goes back to the, the conversations we've had about Marvel and why we wouldn't necessarily want a Marvel shared universe in the video game, sure. right? Because it is, hey, we're Marvel games and we're approaching all these different developers to make their own takes and spins on what these Marvel superhe superheroes are, but because you are going to different developers under different uh, publishers. Facilitating that communication gets hairy and gets messy in a way that you don't really want uh, one, what one studio is doing to hamper what another studio is doing. Yeah. Whereas for WB, w, WB is a video game publisher, right? Like they have multiple studios that are working on uh, the WB games, right? We're talking about, I mean, Gotham Knights that just came out. We're talking about Wonder Woman that's about to come out. We're talking about uh, Suicide about Squad. To come out. Who knows when that's coming out? <laughs> Who knows when we're getting these games, I right? I wish it was about to come yeah. out. But like the idea there of, hey, this is all coming out under one publisher, I think gives you more leeway to go all right like let's collaborate on this how can we make a shared universe that doesn't nece necessarily need to be mcu everything is all 100%. crossing you over hope, but... and I, honestly to kind of take what i said not and walk it back a second i think the video game would make more sense of punch the source wall and then you have a shatter you know the shards and you see the movies in there and you see that yeah. stuff mm -hmm. and that gets exciting if you were to think of D uh, james gunn and his partner running the dcu from the top and then you have the dc games brand similar to bill roseman and marvel games right and you had somebody over there running it hey it's us look at me you know what i mean what up james you know us and then you know we go through and we do that and we make the games that are going to be the good games we go report to james you and me bless we tell him what's happening yeah you know what i mean yeah, mm -hmm. cool. so do you think this this affects anything with what's going on with wonder woman and with suicide squad 
No, I think it, I, I think this easily can be penciled in. It, I think it just comes down to having the stamp and what they're going to sell it as and what they talk about it as. And maybe they don't since these are already announced and these are projects that are already been happening. But I think here it is easy enough to be like, oh, this Wonder Woman is happening on this earth. That is its own thing. But there is this whole thing. And then eventually maybe one day have a cool crisis on infinite earth yeah. fighting game mm-hmm. right where it is all these different things and you get henry cavill to come back and, and you assume that suicide squad is done at this point it kind of has to be <laughs> um, <hope> so. <laughs> it would be very dc for that game to end with a setup for a second game that never happens because oh, the, regi- the regime's completely changed oh, of course. So, yeah that's very much the dc way well wow, look at this thing what is <laughs> bear, oh my God. bear why are you using this shot with it making my head like this it's like zardon <laughs> this is awesome the thing we can do is greg, greg big head mode <laughs> What was the cheat in Golden Eye that you can put in uh, yeah, for this? Big head mode. Just do big head mode. Oh, this so, is like yeah. DK mode. I thought it was like DK mode or something like that. That's crazy. That's, That's just cool. technology in action, folks. So Jordan, as the number one Gotham Knights fan, then yep. is, what do you want to see next from uh, that studio? Right? WB Montreal. Montreal. Okay, I thought it was Montreal. I thought. It was yeah. Montreal. What do you want to see next from them? Um, I'd I'd rather that they did a game that didn't immediately come out to ah well it's not Arkham so if if they wanted to take a character that hasn't had a game and do something on their own track that would be great um of what Wonder Woman's taken um is Batman adjacent because Robin's in it but I'd love a Teen Titans game like oh my god I would love a Teen Titans game. and they've already got the setup with Gotham Knights like see you're ta- you're talking about how like. Yeah, Gotham Knights is a game that I, I like. You just want to pl- you just want to go through the motions. You just want you just want to play the game, right? right so you don't want to play Sonic. I don't want to play Gotham Knights, mm-hmm. but if Gotham Knights was Gotham Knights, but it was just Teen Titans instead, yeah. right? If it was the same quality, the same what gameplay, if it had the art style from the from the TV show. Oh my god! And if if it was Teen Titans, I'll be all up in that yeah. game. <laughs> but like <laughs> the new TV, the, the, the Monkey Spaws, it's the new TV show oh, animation. Oh, uh, it's Teen Titans Go. <laughs> They're yeah. all just little chibi characters. Turn has Michael. I'd be down with that too, honestly. I think that that shows pretty. They funny. can make it like you know the the Dragon Ball fight game that looks like the anime but Dragon it's in Fighter. motion yeah, yeah. They imagine they did that for teen titans and they had the original theme song not the terrible 50 other versions that they did i mean well either you or greg mentioned um what a crisis on infinite earth's fighting game yeah. and i never thought about that until you just said it of like yeah you could make that happen you literally have nether realm who i'm sure on one hand injustice is, has been great for them but like a crisis on on infinite earth's fighting game could just be the next step of what injustice is if you wanted to uh, freshen things up a little and like take another spin on it hell yeah I, I like i think there's a lot you can do with this idea i am excited and curious to see how it goes and i'm also on the side of like i wouldn't be surprised if after looking into it more like james gunn and dc studios are like oh actually no this is way harder than we thought it was gonna <laughs> <Yeah>. be because <laughs> like we make we make movies we've made movies that we know how to make stuff in this other mediums but then they look into games and they're like oh games take how long to make actually never mind keep doing what you do what, what you do i wouldn't be surprised if it goes that uh, direction as well but i think if they're able to make it happen that could be a really cool thing i think that could really uh, be a really different thing yeah and i think it could be a fresh thing for the space yeah and they need, they need it as marvel is like running away with building their gaming universe like we've got wolverine we've got spider-man 2 we've got all the other the Iron Man EA, EA's Iron Man game, which mm. essentially would just be the Anthem tech used properly, which I'm looking forward to. Hell yeah, um, God, I hope so. Yeah, uh, let's talk about story number two. Story number two. Speaking of DC, but it is sad news. Kevin Conroy, voice of Batman in the animated series and in the Arkham da- Ar- Arkham games, dies at age 66. This is Ryan Dinsdale at IGN. Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman in the 1990s animated series, the Arkham series of video games, and more, has died at age 66. Announced on Facebook by animated series co-star Diane Pershing and confirmed by Warner Brothers Discovery, Conroy died on November 10th following a short battle with cancer. Quote, He's been ill for a while, but he's he really put up uh, he really put he really put in a lot of uh, a lot of time at the cons to the joy of all his fans," said Pershing in the post. "Quote: He'll be sorely missed, not just by the cast of the series, but by his legion of fans all over the world." End quote. Barry, I want to tag you in for this one because I th- you're you're probably the Batman animated series fan I know in my life who absolutely loves and adores uh, that series. Right? Very very sad news. Is there anything that you have to to say about this one? I I don't know if I can talk about it. Yeah. Just yet. That's that's how much it it really hit me this morning. So just yeah. rest in peace. The 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 voice of Batman is all I can really say right now. It's tough too because like this is one this morning where I originally didn't have have it on the dock uh, just because I didn't even think about it in the, in terms of video game news. Right? Is one is one that I saw and I was like, ah oh, damn dude, like that's Batman. That's fucking wild. And then Barrett comes up and he's like, yeah, like you know he was he did voice the video game Batman's as well. And I was like, oh shit, you're absolutely right, dude. Uh, and I looking through the Wikipedia article um, or page uh, for Kevin Conroy, I want to like take a look back and see like okay, what were the video game roles he voiced? 
and it is extensive, right? And it's not just Batman. You go through, and he was uh, he voiced uh, Bruce Wayne slash Batman uh, in 1994 for the Adventures of Batman and Robin on the second CD. Uh, <laughs> but he was also in a game, uh, Cru- Crusaders of Might and Magic. Uh, he was in Batman Vengeance, Jack and Daxter, the precursor le- legacy as a fisherman, uh, <laughs> Max Payne Two, the fall of Max Payne as Lord Jack, uh, Batman Rise of Sinsu, uh, Lords of EverQuest, Batman Arkham Asylum, of course, uh, DC Universe Online, of course, Batman Arkham City, Arkham City Lockdown. Injustice Gods Among Us, Infinite Crisis, uh, Batman Arkham Knight, Ar- Arkham Underworld, uh, Batman Arkham VR, Injustice 2, Lego DC Super Villains, and then his latest role was in Multiverses uh, that happened in 2022, right? So he's been active uh, in voice acting uh, in video games as well, right? Alongside, you know, animated movies and, and, do, and doing other roles as well. So rest in peace, Kevin Con- Conroy, an iconic Batman, probably the Batman for, uh, for so many of us out there. Absolutely. Story number three. To give a quick warning on this one, and Greg, if you're able to grab Tim motherfucking Gettys out there, because I think he he wants to speak on this. Uh, there are Pokemon anime spoilers ahead. Everyone, chill out. All right, relax. Pokemon, they, they will be time coded. They will be time coded. Pokemon, and they'll be in the time code. Thank you so much, Barrett. Uh, and yeah, if you want to skip forward based on the time code, do that because we're going to be talking about the Pokemon anime in three, two. Ash Ketchum finally becomes the world's greatest Pokemon trainer. This is Rebecca he Valentine at IGN. Chair, uh, Tim, let it out. Before you guys, the article. guys, I woke up this morning. Let me tell you, I was t- talking to you last week mm-hmm. that this was about to happen, Jordan. Yep. Ash Ketchum is going to be the very best, like no one ever was so after 25 years. 25 and years. And they built the hype. Yep. They did it perfectly, bless. Every <laughs> single choice they made, I was like, oh, my God, they're actually going to do it. They're yep. actually going to do it. And last night, I was looking into it. I was like, when is this episode dropping in Japan? Because I do not want to be spoiled about this. I need to make sure that I could experience it. And I woke up, and I, I realized that it was airing at 4 a.m. So I was like, mm. when I wake up, the first thing I need to do, I already say, bookmark the link. I need to just watch Smart. this. Yep. I clicked that link. I started watching it. Three minutes in, I start tearing up. Hell yeah. Nice. Ten Let's minutes in, go. I am full on ugly crying. <laughs> Let's, Let's fucking go. They did this so, so well. It, it just feels like a culmination of, of so many amazing moments. I mean, I can't believe that in my lifetime, I got Spider-Man No Way Home, and I got the episode of Pokemon that just happened. <laughs> like, That's legitimately, awesome. yeah. it was... Chill inducing, goosebump inducing. I am going to replay this episode for the rest of my life and remember how I felt on this very day. Our boy did it. Yeah. Ash, Pikachu, the entire squad. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. You are the world champion. And Woo! good lord. I honestly I recommend everybody find a way to watch this shit. Cause it and it's just go on Twitter. Literally, mm-hmm. it's just everyone's mm-hmm. clipping it out. It, even Pokemon um, themselves. People are gonna be like, oh, you guys are spoiling this. It's spoiled. Yeah, Pokemon, it's spoiled. Pokemon the, the Twitter account itself is congratulating Ash for the win. But it's not about that. It's not the win. It's how they did it. How mm. he got the win. Mm. Perfect. Uh, Utter uh, perfection. To dive into this Rebecca Valentine article real quick, right? After 25 years, perpetual 10-year-old Ash Ketchum has finally becomes, become the world's greatest Pokemon trainer. Ash's big moment took place in the latest episode of Pokemon Ultimate Journeys, the series, which premiered today in Japan. In it, Ash's Pikachu defeats a Charizard belonging to Leon, who video game fans will remember as the champion of Pokemon Sword and Shield's Galar region. Uh, their battle was the final bout in the Pokemon World Coronation Series Masters 8 Tournament. God damn, that is a title. Uh, mm-hmm. Which pits champions from across multiple regions against one another, which is actually really cool, including Cynthia, Iris, Steven, and Lance. By defeating Leon, Ash effectively uh, proved himself uh, the strongest of all the Pokemon League champions, thus b- completing the dream he first set out to accomplish when he left Pallet Town in episode one of the original 1997 series. Which, when you put it like that, damn, yeah. like that got me here. And also, you mentioned like you mentioned the the idea of spoilers, right? This when I looked on Twitter immediately this morning, like three to four different tweets were yeah. already were uh, like it was trending. It's it. all I said. It's all I saw this morning, and it feels like more of a sports event yeah. <laughs> than, a, no. than an episode of an anime. Dude, you guys like. I, it's so funny, and everyone out there, you guys know me. I get emotional about things that I care about. Mm. I care about Pokemon so deeply, specifically yeah. my connection to the cartoon from being a little kid and all this stuff. The, the way that they chose to show old characters from the past, it just hit me so hard. And as they intercut it with the battle happening, Gia was in the other room, and I was hooting and hollering and cheering like it was a sporting event. And 
I was convinced at moments he was going to lose. Oh, my like, God. They did it where I was like, oh, my God, after all of this, it still <laughs> hits me like you did good. But like, OK, you're, you're not actually going to win. And the moment you realize, no, they're like they, they cross a line. There's a moment where they cross. You're like, oh, there's no taking this back. Like God. they do the nostalgia pull of like, oh, they're going all the way back and they're they're going to build it to the the ultimate victory. And they, they do it. And I I was I was just so emotional for the go. whole thing man yeah. and i i i I'm, I'm just so excited that they did it they they, they pulled mm -hmm. it off this way because it's like it, it could have went so many different ways but like i just can't believe that they they were like you know what if we this is our one opportunity to like pull this off let's pull out all the stops it's, i never would have imagined uh as a kid right like it, pokemon being uh definitely my first anime but yeah. definitely like one of my early memories of watching a show on cartoon network uh in like keeping up with it uh in like a serialized way where i was like i want to know where he goes next i want to see him get all the badges right like pokemon was probably one of the first shows i ever cared about right growing up straight up and the fact that we're here however many years later and like they're wrapping it up in a way and i don't, I don't know what's next for pokemon in the anime yeah, series like, but well, where do they go from here after like ash's journey is done at this point dude i mean that's there's three episodes left this season and uh they're <laughs> they're kind of like treating it as like you know that i mean think yeah. of it this way it's avengers endgame there's yeah. the portals fight but then there was like the final 30 minutes where you get the funeral, you get the Tony Stark speech and all that. Mm -hmm. We're about to get that with Ash. The Ash I think room? I have a feeling I'm about to be crying for the next three weeks. Like, oh, yeah. like they're there. Oh, oh, my God. We saw Misty. We saw Brock. Oh, oh my. OK, well, now I'm I not even going to tell it. you the other people we saw. I got to watch ah! it. Yo, did we see my guy from um, oh, what was the season? Tracy. Are you talking about Tracy? I think I was talking about. Oh, yeah. Tracy. We saw Tracy. Oh, yes. okay. oh okay. yeah. OK. We oh, saw Ash. Look. Ash, Ash's, mom's mom's there? Ash's mom's <laughs> oh, there, bro. Oh, shit. Did you <laughs> me? Oh, man. But, uh, man, yeah, just I recommend everybody. It doesn't matter if you haven't watched the anime since you were eight years old. Like, mm -hmm. go find a clip on Twitter of the the, the, the final battle. There's like a 10-minute clip going around that I see people sharing. I'll go, I'll go actually retweet it like right now just so everyone can find it on my Twitter, uh, at Tim Gettys. Um, it is. But prepare. Prepare yourself. Prepare for trouble. Make it double. Uh, but... Honestly, like prepare yourself to be to be hit in the feels in a way that you do not expect, that you are not prepared for. If you have ever cared about the Pokemon cartoon at any point, mm. they they're gonna they're gonna hit you with something. Mm. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. No, Wait. probably not first. But <laughs> uh, speaking of sports, if you mm -hmm. could stick around for a second, Tim, yeah, and summon. Well, the, actually, this is what I want to do. The giant man, right? Tim told you about it here first. I'm gonna tell you about patreoncom slash kind of funny games where you can go and get the show ad free. And speaking of ads, let us tell you about our sponsors. Shout out to Shady Rays for sponsoring this episode. Shady Rays has all the essentials you need to make summer complete. Shady Rays sunglasses offer an industry best combination of fit, style, and performance without the big brand price tag. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection program in all of eyewear. Every pair is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they will send you a brand new pair. They also provide 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every order and have donated over 20 million meals to date. Look good in your shades and feel good by making an impact. If you don't love them, exchange for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There is no risk when you shop with Shady Rays. Their team always has your back. Exclusively for y'all listening right now, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. You can go to ShadyRays.com and use code KINDAFUNNY for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 200,000 people. And there you go. Check it out. Shout out to Factor, a ready to eat meal delivery. They shop, prep, cook, and deliver to your door so you can just enjoy chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals during the holidays, minus the hassle. Plus, with 34 meals per week, including Gourmet Plus, Keto, Calorie, Smart, Vegan Plus, Plus Veggie, and 36 Plus weekly add-ons, you'll have plenty of nutritious, flavorful options to choose from. Moving into the new studio has totally changed Gia and I's day-to-day -day routine, but luckily, Factors Fresh, never frozen meals make it easy for her to fuel up fast at home and save time with meals delivered ready 
to heat and eat in just two minutes. Factor has everything you need for a week of flavorful, nutritious eats. In addition to ready to eat meals, they have cold pressed juices, smoothies, energy bites, extra protein, veggie sides, and more. Head to go.factor75.com slash kindoffunny60 and use code kindoffunny60 to get 60% off your first box. That's code kindoffunny60 at go.factor75.com slash kindoffunny60 to get 60% off your first box. And shout out to me, Undies. The holidays are officially upon us and it's time to start celebrating, like actually celebrating. It's your holiday too. So you should be able to relax and do what you love. If that means watching every single seasonally themed rom-com, so be it, live your life, do your thing. It's the most wonderful time of the year to try me undies because they're currently offering a very merry deal. You can get 20% off your first purchase with free standard shipping and free returns when you go to meundies.com slash kinda funny. Y'all already know how much I love me undies. Even right now, I'm wearing me undies socks, I'm wearing me undies undies, and this very t-shirt is made of the same soft, beautifully soft micro modal fabric that me undies is famous for. Their undies, loungewear, and sleepwear are made out of the softest, most supple fabric you have ever felt, and that is a fact. They're available in sizes extra small all the way up through 4XL. MeUndies has what you need to make all your favorite people smile this holiday season all in one convenient place. Feel free to start thinking about yourself now. You can get 20% off your first order, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee by going to MeUndies.com slash kinda funny. That's MeUndies.com slash kinda funny. And we're back. Jordan Midler. Yes. You summoned to the stage Greg Miller and Tim Geddes I because have, he had something for it. Yeah, I just have that kind of power. Um, because you guys have supported VGC so much this year, um, we got you some presents. Oh. Oh. The only reason I support anything. <laughs> um, this is yours, Greg. Okay. Can I open it up? Yeah, you can indeed. Oh. Tim, this is yours. And bless you. Oh, oh my God, dude. Oh. Whoa. Oh. Oh, I Let's love go. This. There you go. So, Tim and Bless have West Ham. That is Andy's team, Big Andy Robinson. And Greg, you have the mighty Glasgow Celtic, okay. the greatest team in the world. Um, <laughs> and there you go. Um, this is fantastic. Yeah. So, the sheer stress of ordering those personalized and trying to make sure that I got the names spelled correctly, even though I've seen your names written a million times. Um, Look at that. Look now you're that. talking. Crushed it. Hell yeah. That's football. Oh, that's, that's is, this, is the 30 for a 30 under 30? Yes. That's and amazing. You, you have, yeah. Merrick says 64. I have 13, of course, Taylor Swift's favorite number. There you go. 13, Taylor wow. Swift's favorite number. There you go. You, you got it. You understand. Yeah, you got it. You're Swift. You, dude. Oh, of course. Thank you, Jordan. Course. You didn't have to do this. You do great work, and oh, so does VGC. Th thank you very much. No, you guys, it, it's always such a joy to watch the show because it's like, it's after work for me, so it's at like six in, at night, and I always go down and check, and I'm like, if there's not a VGC story the next day, I'm like, I need to get some VGC stories on this show. <laughs> so, we got to hustle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's genuinely a metric we use to be like, okay, if we're on that show, let's, let's fucking Hell yeah. That Hell is yeah. so nice. That yeah. is fantastic. Thank you guys so much for the work over there. Because, oh, I mean, obviously, we have no show without you guys actually putting in the work. So thank you very much. Yeah, in the same way that I've been talking a lot about, like, how my my days changed without Nival. If if VGC disappeared, my, day, my day's changing <laughs> drastically. Because I think you, got, you guys, it almost feels like you're making, I mean, if it feels like you're making new stories for us, right? Where it, where it is like, all right, what are the key things we need to talk about? Also, what's a write-up that is straightforward enough, that has the details enough, that like gets to the point enough to where we can use it on this show? And we do see has like the ideal news story that works for us for kind of funny games daily. And so yeah, thank you so much that for the work is that the you biggest do. compliment you can specifically Andy. Whenever you guys say that about how the stories are laid out, it's like that's why I do it. That is exactly what we're trying to be like. So, Hell yeah, appreciate yeah. it. Thank you so much, man. Oh, Hell yeah, have a great show. Okay, yeah. you too. Great show. Now, go away. Let's talk about some serious news. Let's talk about some serious news, like God of War Ragnarok sales is story number four. Uh, Ragnarok sales have broken the franchise launch record in the UK. This is Tom Ivan at VGC. Back Tom <laughs> Ivan, the man himself. God of War Ragnarok has made a blockbuster start in the UK, becoming the fastest selling entry in the series to date. The PS4 and PS5 game became the 13th God of War title to be released in the UK when it arrived for PS4 and PS5 on Wednesday. And according to data from the charts uh, from charts firm GFK, uh, which was provided to GamesIndustry.biz, its day one physical sales were greater than the full week launch sales of every previous series entry. Uh, prior to Ragnarok's release, its predecessor, 2018's God of War, was the fastest selling series entry. Quote, it became the best seller at the time in terms of week one sales and also lifetime sales for this franchise, uh, said GFK boss Dorian Blotch. 
Quote, in 2018, God of War ranked at number five by units and revenue on Sony formats, end quote. Reporting its quarterly earnings this month, Sony said the series reboot was one of the biggest titles ever released exclusively for PlayStation with 23 million sales and that it expected a similar performance for Ragnarok. Uh, Jordan, does this one surprise you in terms of how well God of War Ragnarok is selling? Um, yeah, somewhat. It's a, it's a busy release period. Obviously, it's on PS4, but it's very much positioned as a PS5 game. No one has PS5s, although in the UK, it's much easier anecdotally to get a ps5 than it seems to be over here like if you wanted the ps5 could you get it within a day about it searching around it depends on where you live i think in san francisco it's not as easy uh, yeah. to get a ps5 but i've heard in certain parts of the country you can get one a lot easier now yeah so long gone are the days when when the ps5 launched in the uk amazon drivers in the uk were stealing them and mm -hmm. replacing them with like toasters and over there <laughs> yeah and <laughs> um, so it's maybe a bit surprising but i think it's um it's, it's got the big Sony marketing push. It got amazing reviews, justifiably, in my opinion. I think that game's incredible. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's good yeah. to see, especially when I feel like I'll, when there's not a big Sony release, there's a lot of chat about, uh, they do these, they just do these big games, they're stuck in the past, they're not adapting, but you, you Sony are really the only ones that are delivering these. If, if Toys R Us and Times Square still existed, there mm -hmm. would be a big God of War banner around the side of it. And Ozzy Osbourne would be there at midnight to launch the game, that kind of thing. 1,000%. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and I think this is a perfect storm of usually in video games, uh, sequels will sell better than the original. And, of course, God of War 2018 is a sequel to the previous God of Wars that came before it. But yeah. I think when 2018 is coming out, God of War is in a different place, right? We associate God of War with the character action games of the past. The previous God of War that came out before 2018 was Ascension, right? And, like, God of War, even though it is a iconic PlayStation franchise, in that moment, it was a thing of, all right, let's see what God of War 2018 is going to do. And the fact that it delivered and then also had the time over the course of the next four years to continue to sell copies and continue to fill, build um, a fan base and grow God of War into something that is now back to being a premier PlayStation yeah. franchise. Yeah, for sure. Like, people are going to come out at the launch of God of War Ragnarok to see what's happening next uh, in that story. And I think that also uh, attributes well to the uh, fact that this game is launching both on ps4 and ps5 i would have thought that the ps2 games would have actually done much better but i wonder if it's back when god of war was like Ares and all this kind of stuff like mm -hmm. i wonder if that just limited the market um but yeah when you think the amount of copy uh, the amount of ps2s there were and because god of war 2 was so late in the ps2 life cycle i would have thought that would have done a bit yeah. better but i think we're seeing playstation first party focus in their first party offering a lot more to where these games all feel like premiere hey you show up day and date for a playstation first party game yeah. i don't think that was the case during the ps2 generation where god of war was a standout but i think during that generation and the ps3 generation there was such a variety of different games that were bringing it in different ways it was like i don't know if i would necessarily say that during the ps2 generation playstation first party was making like by far the best games on the platform we're now like in the last generation there's the argument there that you could say that yeah playstation first party is making the games that you need to show up for uh day and day and i think they flow into each other where you know we just got well like la uh two years ago we got last is part two right a game that stopped the gaming world for so many people right we got ghost of Tsushima, another one that like might not have stopped the gaming world but it was one that so many people were like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna get this because it's a playstation first party game right and i think that story continues to go where last year again we had ration and clank rift apart which yeah. is another one where you know like i think part of why that game feels so important is because it's playstation first party you know and god of war is kind of helping uh, usher that in as well um and so yeah i think now you're seeing more of a focus and more of a refinement of hey we're playstation and we have a couple of games this year. It is Horizon Forbidden West. It's Last of Us Part 1, but it's also God of War Ragnarok. And if you're a PlayStation fan, we expect you to buy all three. Yeah. Right? That's kind of the place where PlayStation uh, comes from now, uh, nowadays, which I think kind of helps boost those sales. Definitely. Did you enjoy my performances, Mimir? Um, and the... I enjoyed your performances, Kratos. Yeah. I see. It's Kratos visually, but the, I don't know if the actor that plays Mimir is actually Scottish, because mm -hmm. some of it sounds like Braveheart Scottish, but some of it's quite okay, like when he's like... I Kratos, you shouldn't be so hard on the boy. It's like that. Doesn't okay, yeah, work. no, I, oh, man, yeah, I can hear it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got a, you got a good, you got a good. I just need to cut my head off, and then it's like you do, you do the. I did look it up. Uh, Alistair Neil Duncan uh, is a Scottish actor and voice actor oh. who voiced oh. Mimir in uh, God of War 2018. He might have just from, left from uh, Edinburgh. Is, that, is oh, that... Edinburgh is barely Scotland. That's basically. I'm not going to get into that because that. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the so main of Scott. Up, like really bad blood in history. Right there. As soon as you said it, he was like, "Oh man, <laughs> fuck that place. <laughs> look, I mean, fuck with that place." Look, Edinburgh is 
It's England. Anyway, next story. Wow, wow. Next. There's some people out there that are like that are watching KHD right now. They're throwing up their pitchforks. They're like, no, nah, man, <laughs> we don't we don't stand by Edinburgh. Uh, 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 what's the word? Slander. I'm for? Slander. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say slang. Uh, slang is not the word I was looking for. Slander. <laughs> story number five. A sequel to Control is happening. This comes directly from a press release. Remedy Entertainment and 505 Games have signed an agreement under which they will co-develop and co-publish Control 2, formerly known as Codename Heron, a sequel to the award-winning game Control. With Control, we leaped into the, into the unknown. Uh, we wanted to create something new, something different and unexpected, a world like no other. Thank you, the audience, for making Control such a success for us. With Control 2, we'll take another leap into the unknown. It'll be an unexpected journey. It'll take a while. But to put it mildly, this is the most exciting project I've ever worked on. It's still early days, but it will be worth the wait. Best, Mikael Kasurinen. Uh, Jordan, are you a Control person? Did you like uh, Control? Control, an underrated game. If you didn't give that game like a 10 out of 10, I just fell in love with Control. I don't know what it is about Scandinavian games, but Returnal is my joint favorite PS5 game. I Hell love yeah. all, all, all of Housemark stuff. I, I love Alan Wake, even though that has problems. But yeah, um, Control is amazing. It did run pretty poorly when it came out on um, consoles. Yeah, that was like my main beef with it is that like even to just pause and look at your map for some reason, there'll yeah. be like hitching and then the map wouldn't populate all the way. That at PS5 launch. version is amazing. Though. Like if you if you if you ever feel yourself, you need to go back. The PS5 version is great. But yeah, I'm really glad they're doing this. Um, it's not the biggest surprise in the world, but I hope they get this. I presume they'd get the same actress back as the as, as the main it's character. Jesse Faden. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I would imagine so. But yeah, what what. What a cool game! Yeah. Love that game. I adore. Uh, I adored Control uh, when it came out. Aside from like some of the problems I had, right? Like it was 2019, where, you know, funny enough, I want to say the more uh, popular games and the games that were on my list of like, oh, these are my favorite games this year, all kind of had individual issues because it was Control, it was Jedi Fallen Order, yeah. which was also bucket launch for some <laughs> yeah. reason, and the list kind of went on. Uh, but yeah, like I remember Control being a standout just for how good the writing and world building was of that world in an unexpected way. You know, yeah. I think originally when Control was being advertised, I was in it for the style of it and the powers and, like, it being a new Remedy game. Like, oh, yeah, let's go. This seems really cool. And then you play it and, like, you talk to people about it and it's like, yo, did you get? Did you pick up this note where they talk about how, why they're not allowed to bring pencils in the building because <laughs> pencils will fucking kill people? And it's like, whoa, what the fuck is going on in yeah. the game? That, that stuff that you just assume that uh, a lore team had the most fun yeah. um, spending weeks being like, 99.9% .9 of players never going to see this but for the ones that do we want this to be funny we want this to feed back into the world and it just it's a game that has style like oh a yeah. capital s style kind of game for it is and i mean like they're t they're talking about um yeah like we we're, we've penned this deal or we've signed this agreement uh with uh, 505 to co-develop and co-publish control 2 which i would have sworn already <laughs> already happened i i thought this is already a thing that was known uh <laughs> and i saw like imran on twitter tweet out like am i nuts or did they already announce control 2 like two years ago and they, he dug up um uh, an article where it is uh but it said control is more than one location character or story mm. we have more something ambitious as today's announcement stated quote we have outlined high level collaboration terms to further expand the control franchise with a bigger budget control game so like we've known control is happening or control 2 is happening um but i guess it's nice to get additional confirmation on it why not they're a busy studio at the moment they're doing a lot yeah it worries me a little bit but they're also a great studio so yeah we'll see how all that pans out it'll be great Control 2, for sure. I confidence. Think is, I have confidence in. Yeah. I don't know if I have confidence in all their projects. <laughs> well, Because <laughs> what? They worked on... Oh, what was the one? They worked on a campaign that, for Crossfire That Crossfire X. game. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Crossfire X or whatever. Yeah. It's like the fake game that people play in the background of an episode of NCIS. 1,000%. And it, it got like minus 30 on Metacritic. But I don't, I, don't, I don't get... It's the same way that Babylon's Fall. I don't mark against Platinum. It's like... I don't got you guys get I mean, okay well that one's I feel like that one you kind of have to Look, I, gave that I gave that game one star I feel personally responsible for shutting it down but I still love platinum because so. like I I also love platinum yeah but I'm like no more Babylon's Falls for me, <laughs> I don't know if Remedy is going to make more Crossfire X campaigns <laughs> like that I think is like them collaborating with another studio and like on a game that was kind of weird or whatever but well I'm, I'm curious to see how a lot of these projects come out right they have like multiple multiplayer stuff that they're working on as well yeah i'm buzzing for alan wake too the, the what they showed about yeah alan wake really too. Cool. they got the remakes of um max Payne. yeah max Payne one and two i forgot about that oh my god yeah yeah and they maybe have a bit much going on potentially yeah crossfire well, three i'm sure all of these games will come out 
10 out of 10s in, oh, yeah. th- in the next two years. We'll see, we'll see all these games come out. Five out of five, kind of funny. Story number six. PUBG owner Crafton has acquired the Ascent developer Neon Giant. This comes from Tom Ivan at VGC. Back Tom Ivan. Crafton, the South Korean video game holding company behind PUBG Battlegrounds, has acquired the Ascent developer Neon Giant. In an earnings release on Friday, Crafton also revealed that the newly acquired Swedish studio is currently working on an open-world FPS. Neon Giant's debut game, cyberpunk-themed action RPG The Ascent, was released for Xbox consoles and PC last July before coming to PlayStation systems this March. VGC's 4 out of 5 star Ascent review said the title had some of the best world design we'd seen in a game. Crafton's collection of independent game development studios also includes PUBG Studios that does PUBG Battlegrounds, Striking Distance that does Callisto Protocol, and Unknown Worlds that does Subnautica. Interesting to see Crafton continue to acquire studios that I think are pretty reputable, right? Yeah. Like all these studios seem like pretty good studios. The Ascent was a game, like you, like you guys at VGC gave it a four out of five. Mm. I saw quite a few people really enjoy The Ascent. Quite a few people not enjoy The Ascent as much as they thought they would. Uh, shout out to Paris Lily. Um, but like, <laughs> I, I would imagine this is a good move for them. Yeah, and the Ascent is such a cool proof, proof of concept game, almost because you're like, oh, if they can put this out with some kind of backing, imagine what they could do. Um, so yeah, it's the acquisition wars continue. There are only so many companies left to be yeah. scooped up. But this is a, this is a cool one. I'd like to see more from them. Um, it was um, Chris Scullion that reviewed that four out of five, and it was a game that I wasn't keen on. But Chris has this ability to turn me on games completely because he would just say one thing about them, and I'll go off. Oh, because for mm-hmm. Sonic, it was like what Arceus did for Pokemon, Frontiers is trying to do for Sonic. And I was mm-hmm. like, well, Arceus is pretty much my game of the year, so I better try this thing. But mm-hmm. It was still Sonic, unfortunately. But yes, this is cool. Are you looking forward to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? Cautiously optimistic. I think they have taken the feedback that Pokemon is too slow to iterate and gone, okay, let's just put three games in this and see what happens. Three full campaigns, open world. It's, um, yeah, I've been steering clear of all the leaks because I this will be the first generation of Pokemon that I play without knowing anything that's going to happen. Because in Sword and Shield, I was on Cerebi every day being like, okay, what's mm. the leaks? What's the leaks? But this, this, like, when it comes out, this will be a, actually getting that experience of when you're young and not knowing what's going on. Like, not knowing what the next Pokemon is going to be. So... <laughs> Looking back at the, at the story, right, with Crafton, I, I'm so curious to see where this publisher goes in the future, right? Because we're talking about Crafton acquiring studios that are, to some extent, known quantities. And then, like, you know, Striking Distance Studio, which wasn't as much of a known quantity, but had people that we knew in it. Yeah. Um, Callisto Protocol, aside from PUBG, right, it seems like their first big outing of, hey, this is a game that has all eyes on it that we are publishing. That is this single-player action game that is a Dead Space-style uh, survival horror game. And... If Callisto Protocol hits, I, I I think it's titles like that that help determine the future of a publisher like this that are trying to get off the ground that are and get off the ground in the way of like you know they're the, again they're emerging from PUBG which was a su- success right but get off the ground in terms of we want to publish more we want to acquire more right I'm curious to see if Callisto Protocol hits and it is a big success for them it makes them a lot of money does their trajectory end up being like cool now let's fucking full speed ahead yeah. acquire hella studios and start publishing <laughs> hella games or if it is going to be a cool now we just want to make we want to be almost like a devolver digital or like a annapurna and go hey we are an indie publisher that has our own vision of what the kind of games we want to publish are like i want i very much wonder what their their destiny is yeah. as a publisher <laughs> if that makes sense but we'll have to see Story number seven, our final news story for the day dave batista wants to be in that gears movie this is ryan Leston and ign Dave Bautista really wants to be in Netflix's Gears of War movie as the Guardians of the Galaxy star posted a video of himself in the game's iconic armor on Twitter. Quote, I can't make this any easier, he said, tacking both Netflix and the official Gears of War Twitter account. The move is well-timed given the Netflix announced the Gears, Gears of War film just a few days ago alongside an adult animated series. The footage isn't brand new, however, as it comes from a 2019 Gears 5 trailer featuring Batista after he was announced as a playable DLC character. And here's one thing I want to take issue with in this article. Go for it. All right. Who, wait, who wrote it first? Is it one of my guys? This is, no, this is Ryan Leston. Oh, right, go, go ahead. Fire in. This, uh, Ryan Leston refers to Dave Batista as the Guardians of the Galaxy star. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. 
Multiple time world heavyweight champion. Thank you. <laughs> Batista. But member is that of Evolution. how the majority of people know him? Yes. Evolution no. from the Batista bomb. From the Batista. From what he did to Rey Mysterio. Have you no respect? I, I'm did just you saying that there's more Guardians the of the Galaxy fans than there are WWE nerds. Wrong. Sorry. No. Oh, absolutely wrong. No. Absolutely right. wrong. Okay. That is the wrongest thing you've ever heard you say, Baron. Oh, how dare you lie? All right. Leave your all right. <laughs> more Guardians of the Galaxy fans than WWE? You deserve a Batista bomb through this very expensive table for people that. People know Drax really fucking more than they know this table. superstar uh, wrestling person, uh, Dave Batista. I'm just saying. No. Wow. I, you, wow. Okay. All right. I'm, wow. I'm digging my heels in here. Wow. Because I, I know I'm right on that one. So specifically, you think more people know Batista because of Guardians of the Galaxy rather than when he was on yes. a weekly TV show that was watched by like 12 million people a week at that point? Yes. Wrong. Sorry. Wow. You're like our age as well, like uh, yeah, dude. No, makes no sense. Sorry. All right. People are saying Barrett. People are saying in chat is saying Barrett is right. I yeah, because I it's think, Marvel, and think, you two are being insane right now. I think it expanded I the think amount you of people that knew really, Bar- like, Batista. Big fans of wrestling in that era, but no, dude, it's Marvel. Nothing's bigger than that. I mean, I'm not saying WWE is bigger than Marvel. WWE is bigger than Guardians of the Galaxy, is what I'm saying. Yes. One thousand percent. If you ask someone to name like the first fifty characters in the MCU, Batista isn't on there. But I think if you were to ask, ask them to name their first 50 WWE superstars, Batista's right up there. Oh, people are naming Drax. Drax was a, a standout when that movie... Okay, all right. I'm done <laughs> having this conversation. You two are insane. Was Drax the wee, like, raccoon guy? No. 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 God. Evolution's a mess today about it. Your, your opinions today are all over the place, Jordan. It's not just today, mate. It's every single day. <laughs> Breath of the Wild is 7 out of 10. Arceus clip Game that. of the Year. What is going on with I don't you, agree with Jordan clip. about a lot of things, but I agree with him on this, man. The Batista bomb was iconic. His fucking entrance where he did the machine gun thing. You saw the fireworks, and it was sick. Iconic. When he when he did Smack this down. thing with the with the contract to fight Triple H at WrestleMania, I did the... Never, com- heard, never heard of that. You should watch um, This Is Awesome on the WWE Network. It's, it's host, it, yeah. hosted by some hack, but it has some cool clips. It does have some cool clips on there. Yeah. Uh, Jordan, yeah. I'm very excited for the next Guardians of the Galaxy movie, a movie that is very highly anticipated and even more anticipated than, than any WWE WrestleMania that could ever happen. Mm. But the next Guardians of the Galaxy is so far away. If I want to know what's coming out to Mom Grab Shops today, where would I look? You'd go to the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily show hosts each and every week. You're <laughs> <is> wrong. <laughs> when? Out today, we got Atari 50, the anniversary celebration for PS5, Xbox Series X, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. And let me tell you, I've been seeing... Uh, one of your coworkers. Oh yeah, tweeting like crazy about this. The old heads are all over this. This is apparently like very good. And it's great because the Atari brand has been like kicked through the mud so much. So for mm. these like very important games, it's because they released that ET game and yeah. it ruined everything. Yeah, I mean they 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 really should have followed through with building the Atari Hotel, and then we could have been broadcasting live from the Atari Hotel. But yeah, this is a this is an absolute Chris Scullion game, and he seems well mm. into it, and that is. He has master old game. I did get a text from Jared Petty this mm-hmm. morning at uh, ten thirty, so about twenty minutes ago. Bless, there is one thousand percent less Atari <laughs> Atari fifty nine coverage in this episode than I demand. And then he wrote back and said Atari forty. Sorry. Then he <laughs> texted back and said, "Damn it, fifty. <laughs> funny <laughs> enough. Funny enough. I also just got a text from Jared Petty saying, "Barrett, you are so right about Drax." I don't Again, believe that. Jared Petty, an- <laughs> another person where, you know, like how many right things does Jared Petty say on oh, any movie opinions, day? yeah, we don't want to talk didn't, about Jared Petty's Didn't he Petty's say that Winter Soldier opinions. sucks? Isn't, isn't that yes, the thing that Jared Petty says? we don't talk about that, but we're talking about like an actual like uh, fact that you can measure by metrics of how people know Dave Batista. All right, I'm no. putting up a poll. In- incorrect. Jared Petty probably thinks like more people know Paperboy than Kratos. Not Paperboy from Atlanta, the like old game. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah glad for Paper the Paperboy versus, versus Kratos on the Super Nintendo. <laughs> putting up a poll. Uh, Why has no one done that? Like a crossover t shirt where it's like the Paperboy art, but it's Paperboy from Atlanta? I, I mean, feel, there you go. I feel uh, like uh, that's Jordan, you're, you're, you're copyright. giving the game away right there. Copyright. I'll, where do I won't you know? get around to doing that, but you know, if someone else wants to do it. Where do you know Dave Bautista <laughs> from? Can no one phone him? Does no one have his number? It feels like... Who, Dave Bautista? W- yeah. W-E. Barrett, you've got his number, surely, since you're his biggest fan, apparently. 
guardians. No, I, I'd figure you wrestling dorks uh, are you know the the bigger fans apparently. No, you know? The no, no one dislikes wrestling more than wrestling fans. So um, <laughs> it's, it's like Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm gonna put this up for two hours. Where do you know? Do, okay, is this a fair poll? Where do you know Dave Batista from? Choice one: WWE. Mm. Choice two: Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay, but here's the thing. I am talking about general public. General public. You think my Twitter followers aren't part of the general <laughs> public? <laughs> no, I think they're fucking nerds who follow you because you're a fucking nerd. <laughs> that's blessing calls his fans the general public. That's that's has that's has. That's, uh, yeah, that's my name for them. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you call your fan base. <laughs> is general public. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the GP. When I refer to them when I'm whenever I'm Twitch streaming, I'm like, okay, let's, general public. What should I play today? <laughs> All right, cool. I'm not. I'm not gonna put out the poll then. All right, I'll just. We'll just all leave I all mean, this thing in it. You can put it up. You can put it up. I just know where that uh, where that poll is going. We know in. who's right. Because we're, we're, we're talking about kind of funny fans. We're kind of funny fans. I'd say are Marvel fans than WWE fans. But I'm talking about like. <sighs> Never mind. No, that's fair. That's fair. I'm not talking about. I'm talking down. about like your 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 parents who become Marvel fans because of the MCU who also go see that movie and stuff like that. Like, I'll tell I'm you right now, my parents, public. my parents know more about wrestling than they do about Marvel. Okay. Yeah. I'll tell you right now, <laughs> they had to endure me watching that shit growing up. Uh, more for out today. We got Resident Evil Two on the Switch. Tactics is that true? Oh, I guess that must be a Nintendo Switch Online thing. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, Tactics Ogre Reborn for PS5, PS4, Switch, and PC. We got Valkyrie Elysium for PC. Save Room for PS4, PS5, Switch, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X. Uh, there's a Splatoon 3 Amiibo that's out. Chalk Gardens for Switch. Fluffy Horde for Switch. It's Kooky for Switch. And then I got Save Room written here a second time. So Save Room again for everything. Mm. New date for you. The Shoot House map arrives in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 on November 16th. Uh, we got one deal of the day for you. Final Fantasy 15 is XV. Royal Edition for PS4 is $7.49 on Amazon right now. You can go and grab that. Hmm. Now it's time for kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong, where you write in. Let oh, us know God. what we got wrong <laughs> as we got it wrong so we can correct it for those watching later on YouTube and listening later on podcast services around the globe. wonder what this will be about. Oh, uh, I mean, the mom's basement writes in about Breath of the Wild. Of course. Uh, let's see. Okay, Chris Scolian at VGC writes in and there says, Jordan referred to himself as the only Scottish video game journalist. <laughs> wow. But as the OG Scottish video game journalist at VGC, he's very much my protege. Mm. And then he says, in seriousness, may the kind of funny slash VGC relationship continue to grow in strength. Hell yeah. Love yeah, Chris Scolian. Chris is... Chris has been doing this. Like the, the thing about VGC is, Chris, Andy, and Tom have all been doing this twenty years. So when I joined, there was like sixty years of experience in the games media, and then I'm just rocking up here, ex BBC, being like, "Yeah, let's let's do some reviews and do some tech talks." Come on, we're we're huge on tech talk. But yeah, love Chris, very good. Uh, and that's uh, there's no way this is true. What? There's uh, somebody wrote in. Nana Balaji wrote in about Save Room. And he says, "Save Room for Context is a puzzle game that is all the that is all the Resident Evil Four uh, inventory system. Is that true? Hold on, hold on. We got time. I'm looking this up. I have no idea. Well, I look this up. Uh, Jordan, yeah. thank you so much for joining me. This of has course, been a fantastic man. episode of Kind of Funny Games Daily. For people that want to check out your work further, where can they find you? VGC. Um, go and check us out. We're pumping out the news constantly. Reviews, big reviews coming up. Um, yeah, it's been a busy kind of it's been a busy period, and it doesn't help when I swan off to the states for a week to do a jolly and like meet my friends and things like that. But yeah, come over to VGC at Jordan Midler on Twitter if you have if you have an opinion about Breath of the Wild that is different from mine at Jordan Midler on Twitter. Smart, I, smart, yeah. smart man. You see what he's doing there? You see what he's doing there? He's getting that, yeah. that those interactions up. He's making you follow him yeah. because you hate him. <laughs> smart man. <laughs> uh, Barrett, I just dropped in the kind of funny games that he Slack, the Steam page for Save Room that has like the trailer for it up. Let me tell you, it's exactly what Nanobala just described. So much so that I'm surprised this isn't a lawsuit. It is just the RE4 inventory system. <laughs> what? <laughs> How, look. And it's just a puzzle game. I can read. Let me read the description. Um, let's see here. Are you like blowing up their spot at this point? This, this is what's going to get them. Yeah, this is what's going to get them tagged here, bless. When you enter a save room, cool, you know bro. you're safe. No danger can come to you. You can relax. Take advantage of the short period of time to organize your inventory. Heal your wounds and reload your weapons. Can you make all the items fit in your inventory? It's by Fractal Projects. Well, RIP to them. Um, I mean, this has been out on Steam since April 28th, 2022. This is going to be the moment, though. This is going to be the thing. You think this is going to be the thing that alerts Capcom? Johnny Capcom's watching this and he's like ready to to throw down the DMCA. Johnny Capcom's a daily listener of this show. (laughs) 
I might check this out. I might check out this game. This game seems kind of cool, actually. Yeah. This is a great idea. It's a fantastic idea. Go get them. Next week's hosts for Kinda Funny Games Daily go like this. On Monday, nobody, because there's no Kinda Funny Games Daily. Instead, That's we're the doing one. the Game Awards nominees a predictions mm -hmm. games cast. So tune into that. Again, that is happening 9 a.m. Pacific time. 9 a.m. That is one hour earlier, earlier than we usually do this show. 9 a.m. Pacific time uh, as a games cast. Tuesday is going to be Greg, me, and the members of G4, we're going to have a fun KFG. I don't want to spoil too much of it. It's going to be a very exciting time, though. We're going to have members of G4 on. Uh, and then Wednesday, you're getting me and Tim. Thursday, you're getting me and Greg. On Friday, you're getting Tim and me. If you're watching this live right now, after this is Dead by Daylight with uh, Mick, uh, Mick, Mike, <laughs> Nick, <laughs> Roger, Andy, and Greg, all to benefit Extra Life. That's right. We're raising money in that stream for Extra Life. If you want to catch that stream later, you can subscribe to youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Jordan, again, thank you so much for joining me. It's been awesome. Thank you for having me, man. It's always a pleasure. Uh, I was saying it to you before we went on the air. Like my first, second week at VGC, we did this virtually. Yeah. And it was an absolute pleasure. I'm, that I've was been, like nine months ago. Yeah. And I've been a kind of funny fan since those guys left. Like since it's, and it's surreal being here. Um, I don't understand this studio whatsoever. This would hey, cost you. You step this, in here and you're like, what the fuck? How does any of this work? <laughs> this studio would literally cost you like the, the GDP of Scotland to try and get it. And I know, it's scary. Turn right? the show off. It's scary. Cut the mics, bat it. <laughs> you Batista denier. <laughs> Batista denier. For beer what that, mean, <laughs> play, play that, that implies I don't think he's a real person. <laughs> play, play us out to Batista's theme. That's like more people know Batista's theme than they know anything about the MCU. Just wait till the chat goes oh, up. Here. Okay. No, he's taking okay, a step too far. Right. He's taking a step uh, too far. I mean, it was already a step too far. Of but, danger. Okay. Come on. <laughs> I, I walked in the aisle to that song. It's a great song, though. Yeah. It is. I feel it. It's yeah, a great it's song. It's a great song. Shout out to Batista <laughs> as a wrestler. Uh, of course, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. You can reach it live right here on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games and Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. We run you through the nerdy news you need to know about. Until next time, Game Daily. <laughs>